The human brain contains its own evolutionary history. It exists solely for its own survival. Its purpose is no greater and no less. But it is an organ at odds with itself. Its attempt to survive may also be its undoing. The human brain, in appearance, resembles a cauliflower. At its base, from an evolutionary perspective, is its oldest part, the brain stem, and its outer leaves, the most recently evolved cortex. In between both anatomically and in terms of evolutionary age is the midbrain. The brain is a vastly complex organ with billions of cells that communicate through a hundred different neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers that travel between charged nerves. Each of these parts speak continuously to the others. Like the layered seams of the earth, they reveal the path of human evolution as it emerged from the sea and rose to walk upon the land. Our rudimentary reptilian brainstem keeps our hearts beating and our lungs breathing. Our cortex, amongst many other things, receives and processes new information. But the real action is in the midbrain. It is here that our emotions and pre-programmed instincts reside. It is here our ravenous appetites for survival drive our behavior. The midbrain contains the, the brain's self-reinforcement system to the release of a chemical called dopamine. The brain experiences the release of dopamine as thrilling and exciting and is therefore driven instinctually to directing our behavior in ways that maximize its release. These behaviors include sexuality and aggression. The creationists are insulted by the idea that we are primates, but the evidence is there for all to see. In a police lineup with, say, a turtle, a zebra, and an ape, it's not hard to pick out who our cousin is. It is this illusion of exceptionalism, of being special, whether as a species or a group, which is at the root of the denial and rationalizations of war. Our closest cousin, the chimpanzee, shares 98% of the same DNA as we do. Humans, genetically, are more closely related to chimps than our gorillas. Chimpanzees hunt in groups of males who attack and kill not just prey, but other chimps that intrude on their perceived territory. Like human societies, they are instinctually male-dominated, with the submissive females attracted to the more aggressive males. It is out of this species that our species, Homo sapiens, evolved two million years ago. Thus, our midbrains are pre-programmed for the same behavior. Evolution can be broken down into two facets, biological and cultural. Biological refers to the physical changes in the brain, cultural to the things it produces, both materially and non-materially. The major gross structural changes in the human brain plateaued, around a quarter of a million years ago. On the other hand, cultural evolution has grown exponentially. Cultural evolution has led to the large, complex societies we live in today. On the other hand, it has led to nuclear arsenals and a major disruption of our habitat. Thus, weapons and other products of cultural evolution no longer offer survival advantage for some, but rather they now threaten the existence of us all. Hope lies in the learning. The brain has the capacity to literally rewire itself. This quality is called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity involves the rewiring of existing neural networks. Thus, the incorporation of experience alters the brain. We are witnessing the societal norms surrounding violence changing drastically, despite the continuation of armed conflict. It has become less and less tolerated. For example, domestic violence. 
In order to achieve this cultural shift, changes have taken place in the neural pathways that go from the front of the cortex to the midbrain. This neural network inhibits the violent behavior driven by the midbrain. Thus, through learning, humans do, in fact, have the ability to restrain their primate selves. The challenge lies not in self-restraint, but in self-deception, the rationalizations of war.